Hello, beloved of the Lord. This is Beth Potter. It's Friday, March 15th, 2019. I am not sure exactly how this video is going to go. I tried to make one yesterday and it didn't work out very well. <laughs> so um, I was trying to show pictures and some clips and that and something went weird, wonky with the volume and or part of it was I forgot to turn the volume up on the clip a couple of the clips so anyways um we're gonna kind of start over here so but it is on my heart to talk to you about this Borg assimilation agenda of Satan's uh, my attention was drawn to it again uh, while I was researching the ice district and I was also reminded of a video that I had watched back in September with uh, Elon Musk being interviewed by Joe Rogan. Very, very strange interview, but that's the name of the game these days. So where do I want to start? I would like to start on a very positive note. I would like to say a couple of things. Um, the Lord has begun to rule and reign on the earth. Those decrees that he gave me are from him, so they will be enforced by him. I do not know how that will happen, but it's his will. And so I just continue to pray for his will to be done for Edmonton and, of course, in the world. In addition to that, the Lord had me send the video of the Ice District Serpent, the arena called Rogers Place, to two MPs at the federal level, to the mayor and all the city councillors, and to all the community leagues in Edmonton. And then I felt also to send it to all the emails that I had uh, personally um, saved in my, in my email, on my email account. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that I was sending them with uh, everyone able to see each other's email addresses. That was a mistake because emailing is not my thing and I didn't even think of it until someone graciously gave me a call to inform me of what I had done. So I was a bit devastated when I realized but there wasn't anything I could do, it was too late. However, God used that for his own purposes. So, praise his name. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he causes all things to work together for good to those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. All right, so I just wanted to share a little bit about what he's doing uh, with me. Now, I am sure the enemy is not happy about that, but I haven't uh, heard much concerning it. Only one city councillor said, thank you for sharing. Well, bless him. <laughs> All right. Now, I do want to share uh, something out of Enoch today. Because, beloved, we are coming down to it now. We are coming down to the place where the multitudes in the Valley of Decision are going to have to make a choice. And why are we coming down to this? Because the suffering on this earth needs to end. We can see with our own eyes the increase in depravity and violence and sin throughout the earth. It's just like growing exponentially. And 
the abuse and torture of infants and children and adults. But, I mean, of the innocent and the unborn. This is beyond, beyond even fathoming. It's wickedness. That has no comparison. And everyone is suffering. We're suffering from broken relationships. We're suffering from diseases. We're suffering from depression. We're suffering and suffering. And it must be brought to a conclusion. This is the grace of God. So the time has come. The walrus said to speak of many things. That's a little quote my dad used to say to me years ago when I was young. And it went through my mind quite a bit a few months ago. And it is, it's time for everything to be exposed. So, but I want to start with um, an excerpt from the Book of Enoch. And it's Enoch chapter 50. I like that number. All right, it's called The Glorification and Victory of the Righteous, The Repentance of the Gentiles. And in those days, a change shall take place for the holy and elect, and the light of days shall abide upon them, and glory and honor shall turn to the holy on the day of affliction on which evil shall have been treasured up against the sinners. And the righteous shall be victorious in the name of the Lord of spirits, and he will cause others to witness this, that they may repent and forego the works of their hands. I'm just going to interrupt here. The works of their hands. That is our own attempts to save ourselves. To make things right. To fix things. But we must forgo the works of our hands. And that also includes this beast system that Satan has led the, um, the elite and I don't mean people with money, I mean people who are Luciferian and seeking power and to rule this world. He's had them build this system, this beast system, the worldwide internet of things. Thinking that they will live forever and rule and reign as gods, but we know that that will not happen. But the Lord is calling all to forgo the works of their hands and turn to him and be saved, truly saved. All right, so that the, we'll go back, and he will cause the others to witness this. Okay, those are those in the valley of decision. That they may repent and forgo the works of their hands. They shall have no honor through the name of the Lord of Spirits, yet through his name shall they be saved. And the Lord of Spirits will have compassion on them, for his compassion is great. And he is righteous also in his judgment. And in the presence of his glory, unrighteousness shall also not maintain itself. At his judgment, the unrepentant shall perish before him. And from henceforth, I will have no mercy on them, saith the Lord of Spirits. The Lord is about to unveil his glory, his beauty, his kingdom in the midst of great darkness that those on the earth who have been unaware may be able to turn and choose righteousness and be saved. 
Hallelujah. Now it says, yet through his name, they shall have no honor through the name of the Lord of Spirits. I believe what that's speaking about is Jesus, Yeshua. His name means my salvation. And in the last days, his people, those ones who have been mm, through the preparation process, will carry his glory and they will be given the privilege of um, expressing or becoming like saviors, bringing his salvation to those on the earth. What a glorious honor. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this whole Borg assimilation agenda that uh, is coming to the forefront. So this is the beast system and the mark of the beast. I would like to read a couple of scriptures because I think we've been a little bit mm, narrow in our thinking concerning the mark of the beast. And I'll explain that after I read these scriptures. So let's read Revelation 15, 2. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and over the number of his name. All right. They were not just victorious over the mark of the beast. All right, next verse, Revelation 16, 2. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly and painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. All right, now that actually takes place during the wrath after those who have become um, uh, part of the Lord's army are caught up and removed from the earth, those who choose Jesus and resist the mark of the beast and his image. But my point is that they... Yeah, the painful sores came on those who received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. Okay, Revelation 19.20. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. Um, just quick note here. That dream I had of the performer, the uh, magician, I was thinking that that would be the Antichrist, but it looks like it was, from this verse, it looks like that would have been the false prophet. Yeah, that's just a little side note there. Okay, so with these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. And Revelation 24b, they had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. So, these are those who were beheaded for choosing the Lord and not uh, worshipping the beast. So what is involved in worshipping the beast? Well, first I'll explain this cyborg agenda and then we'll talk about that. So what brought it to light or back to mind to me was... Um, when I was doing the research on the ICE district and I came across some cyborg type or Borg type uh, references. One was when I was looking at images, I noticed that there were quite a number of images um, which had the credit uh, given on the side 
And so it said um, at the title of the image, and then it would say uh, Flicker Hive Mind. And then it's uh, hiveminer.com is the website of the photographer. So that word hive, hive mind, also flicker, um, speaks to me about this uh, assimilation agenda. And because the cyborgs are known as, they are um, combina a combination of uh, biological and mechanical uh, beings. So they've been augmented by mechanical uh, devices and also uh, connected to uh, the hive, to the um, collective. So all of them are interconnected into this collective uh, system, which is essentially an internet type system, which is headed by the queen and, um, yeah, I don't know if that's the world's best explanation. The video I did yesterday was a little better. Um, I might, I might upload that video, even though it's, it's not, it's got some, uh, just actually not that many, but a few, uh, flaws. Um, but it does have the images and things like that. So, I'll, I'll maybe uh, upload it just as an addendum to this. If you if you want to look at it, then that's yeah, that's up to you. <laughs> Please forgive my technological um, difficulties. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, so yeah, these references, and then and then there was also. Um, a new publication called The Daily Hive, insinuating that, you know, these cities, and so it has, it distributes to four different cities in Canada, and it's calling the cities a hive, basically, which is very similar to uh, what Elon Musk said in this interview. Um, which I'll talk about later. But that Daily Hive uh, publication also has a subsidiary company called Colony. So these are all like references to this whole cyborg um, singularity, connectivity, uh, losing your individuality and becoming part of a a hive mentality um, that that it was uh, described in the Star Trek series, uh, which featured the Borg. So all those reference brought, references brought me back to this interview with Elon Musk, and this is a strange interview. I will attach it, link it below. But in the interview, he states that he's an alien. Joe Rogan uh, lifts him up as a savior. Um, Joe Rogan speculates in the interview that Elon Musk is actually a cyborg. Uh, and, and then Elon Musk says that uh, we're all cyborgs. And that, you know, every company is basically a cybernetic community. We're all linked through technology. And, and he says basically because we have cell phones, we are essentially cyborgs already. This, I feel, is all just mind preparation. Because what that, that interview basically was was a soft sell for his um, neural lace technology, which is an interface to connect men's minds. It's actually injected into a person. It becomes part of them. It cannot be changed. 
whereby the internet becomes another layer of consciousness in a human being. This would cease to make that person a human being anymore, created in the image of God. It would give Satan unlimited access to um, to speak to that person, to uh, uh, lie, to uh, change them into becoming like-minded with him. It's just unbelievable, really. But I, I want to talk about this worshipping of the beast and the image of the beast. Now, we talked about how this whole internet system is actually the image of the beast. How better to worship the beast or basically than to become one with him? To become one with it. And we know that this beast system is about to be made sentient uh, by Satan's spirit, as is the Antichrist. But this is being sold as a solution to our AI problem because he's building fear into people that AI is going to take over. Well, Satan's been running the show from behind his curtain for, well, since the fall, you know? So, but he's building up this AI uh, or fear of AI taking over as the reason for us taking this neural lace. Uh, okay. That is... Okay, all I'm saying here is I believe that would be worshipping the beast, taking the neural lace. I don't believe it is necessarily act the actual mark of the beast, because I believe that the mark will be visible. But once people have taken the neural lace and worshipped the beast, then how long do you think it will be before they take the mark of the beast? Because they will have n no filter anymore against all the deception and delusions and... Um, agenda of the enemy. They will just be convinced that this is the way to go. So I believe this is like basically the first step and I believe that they're about ready to roll this out. In fact, in that uh, video in September, Elon Musk stated that within a few months uh, they would would have something significant to announce and something that would beyond, be beyond what people thought was possible. And I believe this rolling out of the neural lace will be very close in timing to the beast system becoming live, the Antichrist being indwelt. But it will also be around the same timing that the man-child is caught up and equipped and changed, as we read in Enoch, covered with the light. Uh, what did it say? Covered with the light. Sorry, just want to get it right. And the light of days shall abide upon them. So I believe all this is about to come to pass. All right, at this point, I'm going to uh, show you a potential timeline. And at this point, it almost seems like the best possible scenario. And I'll explain that um, after I show it to you. Okay, now I'm sorry. I'm going to do this style. I don't know. Can you see that? Okay, I'm blocking the light here. All right, potential timeline. Spring of 2019. Satan's um, time on Earth begins. 
the fall of 2021 would be the last possible time uh, when the Mark of the Beast could be uh, instituted, uh, according to a word that Neville Johnson received in the fall of 2014, when an angel told him that within seven years, the Mark of the Beast would be instituted. And then one year after that would be um, the fall of 2022, which is three and one half years after uh, the beast uh, comes to the earth and has his time. And then after that comes the wrath of God once um, all God's people are whisked away to safety. Now, the reason I say that this is probably the best case scenario is that if Satan's three and a half years starts in the near future, then, and if the mark of the beast is instituted that there will be no buying or selling without it in the fall of 2021, then that would only leave one year for Satan to loose hell um, and, and, and force people to uh, take the mark or die. Otherwise, if uh, his time begins later and the mark of the beast happens in the fall of 2021 at the latest possible time, then it would leave more time in the end for Satan to um, to to make things beyond hellish. Okay, so I believe that the best thing would be for Satan's time to begin soon. If the mark of the beast, if it, it doesn't get to the point where we have to buy or sell and we take it to buy or sell, then the real uh, crux, we don't get to the real crux of things until um, two and a half years later. So that leaves, would leave two and a half years from this spring for God to bring his kingdom in the midst of Satan organizing his kingdom to get to the point where he can institute that law that you have to have the mark of the beast or no buying buying or selling. Do you see where I'm going with this? It would leave two and a half years for both light and darkness to demonstrate their qualities to for people to wake up and to understand where we're at and to choose before it gets to that point where they have to to die so they can grow in the Lord they can choose the Lord as soon as possible and um, uh, be built up in their spirit man and and come into this incredible faith that will be needed for when the bark, mark of the beast is instituted I hope I've explained that clearly all right I do believe that all indications are that That, that is very likely to be the timing. Okay. So God, God bless us and keep us. And uh, glory to his name. I look forward to seeing his kingdom on earth. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Now, I don't know if there's anything else I want to share concerning that for today. Um... Okay, I think I'm just going to leave it at that for today. I will upload the other uh, video that I made yesterday. It has more details uh, and it might make a little more sense in the context of what I've just shared. So feel free not to watch it. <laughs> I'll just put it there just in case you want to see some images and some clips from that interview. All right, so I love you. I love you. I thank all of you who've joined me on this journey and um, yeah, 
I don't know how long um, YouTube will continue after the beast system changes over and uh, Satan takes it takes it over. Um, so I just wanted to take this opportunity to say I'm very grateful for all who have joined me, and um, and I'm just I'm so thankful to have met a number of you, and I just pray God's peace upon you, and uh, may His will be done, may His kingdom come on earth as in heaven. God bless you all, and bye bye.